Welcome, gentle listener. I am Baldemort, your faithful servant, and I wish to introduce you to the forces, factions, and faces of the Warhammer 40k universe. The grim darkness of the far future. Where there is no time for peace, there is only time for war. Just a quick public service announcement. We have a channel for natural history and one for mythology now. So if you like our presentations, go have a look in the links in the description. You never know, you may like them. This week, I thought it best for us to return to the Hammer of the Emperor, the Astromilitarum, the Imperial Guard. We have heard about many a line unit and squad, but now it is time to look at some of the denizens of the command tents, the officers of the Guard. Hence today, we shall be discussing the Master of Ordnance, a crucial role and inarguably, most often, a battle winner. And so, as usual, for the very basics, let us lean on existing wisdom. To quote, A Master of Ordnance is a specialist within many Astromilitarum regiments who is responsible for calling in timely and accurate artillery fire to support the action of his unit and others further down the chain of command. Unlike many of the other specialist roles that guardsmen can fill over the course of their service, the position of Master of Ordnance is a highly formalized position within most regiments. While some regiments allow any officer equipped with a Vox Link or accompanied by a Vox Operator to request artillery fire, the Master of Ordnance has the command authority to order such bombardments, which can light the field ablaze, shatter defensive lines, or cripple a charging wave of foes before they can strike. The role of the Master of Ordnance is an unusual one, in that unlike many others, it relies on the individual interacting with units outside of his own regiment on a regular basis. After all, most Imperial Guard regiments consist almost entirely of the same general type of subunits. If an infantry regiment requires artillery support, it must obtain it from an artillery regiment, which itself may be positioned many miles behind the front lines. Communication between regiments can be very difficult, and facilitating this communication is the role of the Master of the Ordnance. Given that many Imperial Guard regiments speak dialects of low Gothic that are all but unintelligible to others, the scope for confusion is enormous. The Master of Ordnance is therefore trained to communicate rapidly and clearly regarding abstract concepts such as trajectory, yields, vectors and the like, and can thus converse in the common language of high explosives. In addition to the necessity to converse with other regiments, the Master of Ordnance might also be required to coordinate with members of the Imperial Navy, as vessels in low orbit offer super-heavy firepower support to the ground pounders, or with the servants of the Adeptus Mechanicus, the custodians of all manner of arcane war machines, from mighty titans to arrays of exotic city-raising archaeotech. Training While well, almost every world in the Imperium of Man is required to render its tithes of men and material to fuel the ceaseless wars of the Imperium. The skills and qualities of the human component of the tithing process vary enormously. A ferocious warrior from a feral world might have spent his life mastering survival in a hostile environment, while a hive worlder is likely to be schooled in the operation of numerous types of manufacturing machinery. For both, this knowledge is in large part intuitive and obvious by adulthood, and so it can be difficult to relate new skills in these terms. However, the human mind has an incredible elasticity to it, and individuals who can be convinced to learn can develop new knowledge later in life. The position of Master of Ordnance requires mental acuity of a sort, if not always raw power, and a strong situational awareness. It also requires ability to learn as few regiments train the troopers of the line in the techniques and rituals incumbent in this position. A few units do maintain their own regimental programs and practices to train these artillery experts. 
a number of these specialist regiments, those whose primary role is to provide artillery support for other units in the field. For those regiments where the use of artillery weapons is common, the troops are taught to calculate the landing point of high-impact shells alongside proper maintenance and the use of their las guns. Though such regiments do not teach their troops of the line to truly understand the mechanics behind firing their indirect weapons, some troopers nonetheless grow to excel through raw practice and innate spatial awareness, becoming incredibly accurate and deadly with their artillery weapons. There are certain other regiments, especially those that draw a large proportion of their troops from worlds where one's primary education is raw survival and all other concerns are secondary, that subject promising troops to extensive and often highly invasive processes designed to implant the necessary skills for calculating artillery trajectories directly into the minds of the recipients. This process is most often carried out soon after a regiment is tithed into the Imperial Guard. Some of these troopers are volunteers who wish to better serve their comrades and the God Emperor by enhancing their skills with indirect fire weapons. Others undergo the process less of their own volition and more by order of their regimental commander. Sometimes the trooper rejoins his fellows with no knowledge of what happened while he was unconscious, while in others the trooper recalls every last excruciating procedure in painful detail and has extensive scarring or obvious bionic augmentation to show for it. Either way, the individual is granted the skills and knowledge needed to order complex fire support missions from allied artillery units, Imperial Naval Orbital units or other similar formations. Combat Tactics an Imperial Guardsman designated as a Master of Ordnance might serve at almost any level of his regiment's chain of command. The most experienced often serve in the command squads of company captains or higher, but the less senior are simply line troops with additional training and responsibility. These Guardsmen are, first and foremost, specialists serving in the infantry squads of their regiments but their presence is an enormous force modifier that allows the unit to call upon a formidable weight of firepower. The Master of Ordnance has a staggering degree of destruction at his beck and call, allowing him to call down heavy ordnance to an enemy position should his unit become pinned down or engaged by unexpectedly effective resistance. There are limits imposed upon the trooper's ability, however, for if there was not, he might be tempted to order fire missions when faced with even the slightest challenge. The first restriction is one of comparative rank. Though he has the authority to order the fire support, the type and frequency varies according to the specifics of his own appointment and authentication ciphers it grants him. Squad of platoon level masters of ordnance can call in far less destructive and numerous fire missions than those that serve at the level of company or regiment, for example. Furthermore, a master of ordnance who abuses his authority is very likely to lose it. For the commanders of the artillery regiments he is ordering fire from do not hesitate to protest to his commanding colonel. As officious as the Departmento Munitorum's shell counters are, the enemy is far more of a threat to the continued existence of the average Master of Ordnance. Depending on the nature of the enemy, the Master of Ordnance is often very high on the list of targets, and therefore in greater danger than most of his comrades. It is often said that the Master of Ordnance has an average life expectancy of less than 30 minutes once battle commences, and so many line troopers regard them as tokens of bad luck. Though said in jest, there is something of the truth in this assertion. For a canny enemy, especially a human one, that shares many of the Imperial Guard's doctrines, is likely to be able to identify the Master of Ordnance and make every effort to kill him. Most Xenos foes are incapable of telling one human for another, of course, and so make no special effort to single out the Master of Ordnance. Rebels, heretics, recidivists, separatists 
and most other human enemies the Imperial Guard are likely to face are a different story, as are the more advanced Xenos foes, such as the Eldar. Regimental Variations Because the role of Master of Ordnance is relatively formalized above the regimental level by the Departmento Minitorum, there tends to be little in the way of variations in how different regiments actually utilize their capabilities. The procedures used to call in artillery fire support are necessarily standardized, and so little variation is possible. That said, the way different regiments train their masters of ordnance can differ, as can attitudes towards these specialists. The Death Corps regiments of Krieg have, on occasion, been seen to demonstrate a particularly fatalistic attitude towards the procedure of calling in artillery fire support. The Death Corps place very little value on the life or well-being of any individual troopers, and this extends to the manner in which their Master of Ordnance calls in fire support. Most Masters of Ordnance ensure their comrades are well clear of the area to be targeted, unless the destruction of a specific enemy is demonstrably more important than the lives of their friends. The Death Corps pays scant heed to the safety of their own troops, calling in overwhelmingly destructive fire missions at the expense of their comrades' lives. The Death Corps regard this as due penance, and time after time have been seen to march stoically onto a battlefield churning with exposes. End quote. Now the Master of Ordnance can be fielded in a game, loitering about the commander, and being able to bring down a barrage of death each round. Something I hope will not change in the new Codex, because I do so love the odd and interesting units and abilities. With the new naval squad in the Kill Team expansions, I am hoping to see these rare officers potentially have entourages to plump up their position on the tabletop. Why not? As they say, variety is the spice of life. I have been Baldemort, your faithful servant. Please do check out our links for other entertainment opportunities, as mentioned earlier. And thank you for your precious time. Now, no matter what you do today, do try to make some time for fun. Toodaloo.